क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी फोर इट रीड्स अ स्मॉल बीड ऑफ मास स्मॉल एम विच इज फोर के जी इज थ्रेडेड ऑन अ होमोजेनस फ्रिक्शन लेस रिंग ऑफ कैपिटल एम मास विच इज सिक्स के जी एंड रेडियस इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव मीटर इनिशियली द सिस्टम रेस्ट इन अ फ्री स्पेस नाउ द बीड इज स्ट्रक टू इम्पार्ट वेलासिटी टेंजेंशियल वेलासिटी यू इज इक्वल टू फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड फाइंड मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ इंट्रैक्शन ऑफ फोर्स बिटवीन दैम and also find the minimum kinetic energy of the bead in subsequent motion now let's say this is the ring on this ring there is a bead of a small m and this bead is given certain velocity let's say that velocity is u and to towards uh, tangential direction now here this figure i have drawn with respect to center of mass you will find there will be center uh, this is going to be center of ring which is capital m this is center of bead which is small m and the combined center of mass will be somewhere in between let's let's say small r1 is the distance from the center of mass of the bead small r2 is the distance from the center of mass of the center of ring now with respect uh, with respect to center of mass bead will be moving here then this uh, center of ring will also be moving now this is the velocity initially given to the bead so we can find out what is the velocity of center of mass so bead and ring they are considered as a system so initial center of mass velocity is going to be vcm which is going to be small m u divided by small m plus capital m because the ring was at rest initially now you'll find uh, this is everything is in a free space and uh, this is a frictionless so there's going to be no external force acting since there is no external force acting then we will claiming that uh, center of mass velocity will not change that means center of mass will be moving with the uniform velocity so we can take the frame of reference of center of mass so with respect to center of mass you will find the velocity of bead will become uh, u minus vcm and velocity of center of ring will become uh, this ucm in the opposite direction so this velocity will remain constant uh, as there is no external force i stated with respect to center of mass bead and center of ring will move in a circle so radius r1 and r2 as shown in the figure so this center of mass now will be stationary and this bead will be moving in the circle of radius r1 center of ring will be moving in the same radius of r2 now such that you will find a small r1 plus r2 is going to be capital r capital r which is the radius of the ring and also since this is center of mass location so we can say m small m r1 is equal to capital m r2 this is the position of center of mass by using these two we can solve for small r1 small r2 small r1 is going to be capital m r divided by small m plus capital m small r2 is going to be equal to uh, small m capital r divided by small m plus capital m so these are r1 r2 we got to know v1 as i told you v1 is going to be u minus u vcm u is given vcm is this number so when we subtract it it turn out to be capital m u divided by small m plus capital m similarly v2 is going to be which is equal to vcm so that's going to be small m u divided by small m plus capital m we got to know their velocities all with respect to center of mass now with respect to since center of mass is the inertial frame so uh, we can measure the force of interaction in either of the two either on the bead or on the center ring so if we are measuring on this b then it's going to be f is equal to since uh, with respect to center of mass is moving on a circle of radius r1 it must be subjected with a centripetal force which is m r1 square by r2 and this centripetal force is being provided by the ring so that means this is force of interaction so m v1 square by r1 now v1 we have calculated like this we can square it r1 we have already calculated we can put over here simplify this it turn out to be f is equal to small m capital m u squared divided by capital r within bracket small m plus capital m now all numbers are known to us we can substitute we can find out uh, and then numerical value come out to be 120 newton that means force of interaction is going to be 120 newton then we need to find the minimum kinetic energy of the bead so uh, velocity of the bead in the ground frame because kinetic energy we are looking for of bead it must be from the ground frame so velocity of the bead with the ground frame is going to be velocity of the bead with respect to center of mass plus velocity of center of mass these are vectors now we want this vb to be minimum this vb is going to be minimum when they are in the opposite direction and then we need to see the feasibility yes they can be in the opposite direction so vb cm is going to be v1 and vcm is going to be minus v, uh, this this number now why they can be opposite or because they this bead is moving in a circle so bead's velocity direction is changing to in all directions so there will be one direction existing which is going to opposite to the direction of center of mass velocity now v1 we have calculated vcm is given 
or calculate it. So we can simplify this. This turn out to be capital M minus small m divided by capital M plus small m into u. That is the minimum velocity of the bead. And if we got the minimum velocity of the bead, so kinetic energy is going to be minimum as a half m, that minimum velocity square. So we can square up this number. So it turned out to be half a small m within bracket capital M minus small m divided by capital M plus small m square into u square. Again, all numbers are known to us. We can simplify, put the values. Answer comes out to be two joules. That means two joule is the minimum kinetic energy that the bead is going to have in its subsequent motion. And the force of interaction is given by this expression. These are our final answer. Thank you.